welcome everybody to the third day and uh, of XTC. And yesterday in the talk about kind of T already teasered that today I'm going to talk a little bit more about QuinFT's new uh, new WL Roots backend. And yeah, I just want to give you a little bit of an overview, a rundown of uh, how this was implemented and also a little bit of primer to what WL Roots actually is. And um, yeah, let's start with this, right? So what is WL Roots? Probably a lot of people uh, listening here already know it, but uh, just to pretty quickly uh, give you an overview, it's a C library. You can build Wayland compositors with, with and um, it's used by several projects, like independent also of WL Roots itself, uh, Sway, which is the one not independent, right? It was basically the one which WL Roots was uh, created for. It's a tiling window manager. Yes, for example, also Gamescope, a project by Valve to run um, to run um, Steam games with in a very efficient manner. Uh, Fog, for example, is, uh, I, I think it's uh, pronounced like this, Fog is for Vipurism, um, a compositor meant for mobile phones, for their Librem 5 and so on. So it's also using WA roots internally, what maybe not everybody knows. And now there's QuinFT making use of it. So it's actually used by quite a lot of projects nowadays. And it's, being actively developed, and there are also regular releases to it, so very well maintained. It's being developed here on the right. You can see it's on GitHub, right, with um, yeah, what you expect from a bigger open source project. So um, that's quickly to what is WA Roots. The other question is why did we decide in QuinFT to make use of it, right? So for us as a C++ project, of course, it's uh, because WL Roots is a C library, that means uh, easy integration. Right? So it's uh, uh, pretty quickly to to work with it, right? uh, as, as long as you remember to uh, see extern the includes. Um, yeah, it has a amazing build system. Uh, we in uh, QuinFT use uh, CMake, right? Uh, which is, I would say, very similar in many features. Maybe has a little bit more complex syntax as Mason, but it's still working well. And it has good integration also with Mason or rather Mason features through the package build, a good integration with CMake. So that's also working, yeah, super fluidly. And uh, what's great about WL Roots is a toolkit approach, right? So um, I will come to that uh, more later basically means that you can pick different components and modules of WL Roots without having to uh, restructure all your own code and having to include everything else which WL Roots includes. So you can very specifically uh, pick things uh, out of WL Roots, which offer you uh, a lot of uh, simplification of your own code, but still allows you to, uh, to enhance it with your own stuff. Yeah, the contributors of uh, WA Roots are just nice uh, to work with. And they are also active in upstream development, free desktop.org, and so on. Well, and that's uh, very important for me as well. Um, yeah, if you are more interested in the reasons uh, why uh, kind of teach use uh, WA Roots and also a comparison with alternative uh, projects, um, then I can recommend to you the blog post I did about it uh, a few months ago. So uh, just go to my web page and then you can find it at the very top. So quick introduction to WL Roots. Why did we choose WL Roots? Uh, I want to give you also a little bit an insight into how WL Roots is actually built up. So if you want to create your next uh, compositor with it, then you already have a, like a starting point there to begin with. So. On a very high level, uh, WL Roots is uh, basically split up into a backend and a frontend part. I call it this way, backend and frontend. And the backend allows to communicate with the uh, underlying platform or, or often just the hardware, right? Via DRM, talking to the kernel and so on. The frontend on the other side that provides uh, function types and so on, so you can talk, uh, as a valent server to valent clients via the valent protocol. So it uh, provides a lot of types for that, like uh, for which encapsulate then the functionality of the objects in the valent protocol, like WLC, for example. 
in between uh, front end and back end, but uh, also independent, right? In this uh, toolkit uh, approach is a renderer of WL Roots and it features a um, OpenGLS ES renderer, which then talks via EGL uh, to the hardware, and a Pixman renderer for software rendering. There are also other independent components, which I uh, will mention here because they can be important for you depending on your needs. There is a session component, which uh, provides um, yeah, your functionality to talk to lock and D, for example, to get the DRM master and uh, to get the, um, the, the, the input devices from lib input. And uh, nowadays, uh, it uses uh, it has a CD backend, so it uses CD, that's, which is again another independent pro project uh, to talk to this uh, to this uh, session component uh, to this to the session backend, and that's great because other projects like Western are using it too, um, if I recall correctly. So that's something where already some um, yeah some streamlining and some unifying happens. So session component is one thing. And then it gets it gives some gives you some other helper tools at hand. For example, the Xcursor library, which basically wraps Xcursor, the library, to get a cursor pix map. It's kind of an implementation detail of Wayland. And XWM and XWayland server components, which allow you to start an XWayland server and independently of that uh, run as the XWM, which is the uh, X window manager. So if you have the XWayland clients running, then to manage them, the uh, Wayland server must act as an XWM as well. So in a graphical view, that uh, could look like this, right? So you have the front and back end in the middle. These parts allow you on the, uh, the front to talk to, uh, to all the Wayland clients and on the back to talk to your platform, right? And in the back end, you have different plugins or, I mean, they are statically compiled, but you still, uh, at runtime, uh, it decides what uh, what is necessary. So there you can then, uh, either if you run on DRM directly, right from the virtual terminal, for example, then the DRM backend is chosen. And you usually have another backend, uh, yeah, put to that, the lib input backend, to talk the uh, input things, right, with lib input. And um, if you run, for example, your compositor in another Wayland session, then there would be a Wayland nested plugin chosen. And so, yeah, depending on that, uh, your platform, it uh, does that all for you. And um, yeah, the renderer, the session, as I said, are uh, in, um, independent modules you can use, or the session is actually necessary right for the backend in some cases to get the to get the input devices and the DRM master and so on. And there are these helpers which allow you to also simplify your code, which are also independent. And yeah, as I said, this toolkit approach is very, very uh, very, very nice to use as a consumer. It's very helpful uh, to not have to use everything, but that you can really pick and uh, there are also examples for that, right? So going from the backend and frontend split, there is now an example of a compositor which only uses the backend part of WL roots as QNFT, right? We only use the backend at the moment. We don't use the front end. We don't use the renderer, anything else. Coming to it later, uh, I would like to expand on this uh, integration with WL roots making use of more components, right? But for now, we only use the backend and we can do that, right, with WL roots. And there's also an example of a of a compositor which only uses the front end in comparison, right? But not the backend code because it has its own backend code. Uh, game scope, you see it there. It's uh, game scope only uses the front end uh, of WL roots to communicate with uh, with uh, Wayland clients, but it doesn't use the backend code because it has its own backend uh, where it talks, uh, where it renders via Vulkan and has some optimization to use the compute pipeline for compositing and so on. So it's uh, pretty interesting what it does, right? But uh, because it does, has it, uh, um, it wanted to quickly get up and running this inside uh, of Gamescope, it only chose to use the front end part. Then there are, of course, ex examples of compositors which use both, right? For example, Sway and Wayfire. 
uh, two such examples. Uh, yeah, you can see here some pictures in the top right corner of its Wayfire. Uh, bottom left, it's uh, obviously QNFT, and uh, you have there the Steam Deck, which runs uh, game scope for showing the Steam UI. So different things you can make use in WA Roots, examples there for that. Uh, to even help you further with uh, giving to starting, giving you a quick start if you want to write your own compositor with WA Roots, then there are, uh, I just want to name drop some, some structs and functions which are central to to these to the backend and front end parts of WA Roots for the backend. You got a struct WA backend and you can create that right uh, from through a function call which gives a WA display pointer. There are some common types which are used in both. Uh, parts back and in front end, like for example, uh, WLR output, which uh, wraps obviously in output and keyboard and front end, where you have other types, which you can also access easily through some uh, creator factory functions. And uh, one thing which you might uh, stumble uh, up on when you first look at the at the source code is that the, as a consumer, the libraries or the headers you want to include are actually all in one subdirectory, uh, namely include WLR. So only in this subdirectory uh, are the APIs uh, you use for writing your compositor. Don't look at the other includes, they are internally for um, the other subdirectories in the include subdirectory, they are used internally by WLR roots. So that's a quick overview of W roots now. How uh, are we using it in QNFT? I said we use only the backend part for now. Uh, for that, um, so the first idea was to just uh, use the backend part to show buffers on the outputs, right? Like talking to DRM. But we then quickly realized that uh, we require session integration for that because uh, yeah, we want to become a DRM master. And it also makes sense to have the input processing directly handled by WA Roots because of this combination of lib, lib, lib input and uh, DRM and in the other backends, then there's also input directly into written into the backend. So it makes sense to use all of that together. And uh, yeah, the graphical output we have then also, um, basically we use our internal renderer to to, uh, to draw onto a buffer, which we allocate ourselves, and then we send it to the WL roots back and via DM as a DMA buff. And the uh, goal now for the next month is to make use of WL roots renderer uh, as well. And the advantages uh, we should, uh, should be able to have from that is that we can then use something like direct scanner for example, and uh, and currently, um, WA Roots uh, upstream is uh, is working very hard on uh, on further improving the renderer and then also an integration with lift, lift, with lift lift off. So you have uh, scan out directly in overlay plans. So there's just a lot of stuff in the future which uh, we we could then make use direct. Uh, we could direct make use of. So that would be very helpful, and uh, that's why I think it's good to now look directly into how we can make use of the renderer as well. So yeah, as um, like six months ago, something like that, I decided, or yeah, something like that, six months, six months ago, I decided to start with uh, with this WL Roots backend project. And uh, as usually with bigger projects, I started with an issue ticket. And um, yeah, the, as I first only render backend, I got then feedback from Simon. So I expanded a little bit on it. Uh, I worked on a separate uh, branch for that. And uh, first, I did a minimal vertical slice, so it, so I can can just start with uh, getting something out there. And as I said, I needed also session and the input through uh, through WA roots, which allowed us to remove a lot of our own code, which uh, which is really helpful. And yeah, so in the timeline, I showed this also yesterday. Basically, WA roots backend went from the work went from end of March to. Uh, end of June, but still we now are in a phase where we do a lot more testing on the master branch and uh, we had already some fixes for standby and pointer gestures uh, uh, merge, for example, and uh, also what allows us 
uh, that allows us now to simplify the startup logic. So yeah, there are, as I said, a lot of advantages for using WI routes like slim down code base. Our integration tests now use the same code path as a live session. And we can work together with WA routes upstream. So that is also just good uh, because, uh, yeah, we also, for example, have better communication and can share information better. And yeah, in a future ecosystem, WA routes would be a central part of it by uh, having this windowing library collection, which I talked about yesterday. And I said the next step now is to integrate the WA routes renderer. And we currently use our old render code asset, but um, yeah, the goal is to use the WA roots renderer. A little bit the challenge is that uh, currently WL roots uh, upstream is working very hard on the renderer uh, to improving the renderer. So we require some good planning and communication with upstream to get this going. Right. And our old can renderer uses desktop OpenGL. So we have to maybe rewrite some of the effects or at least adapt them. So we can use the OpenGL ES, which the WA roots renderer uses. Yeah, and so that's we. I want to start with this work very soon after XCC, and I hope for the next release when we can already merge it. So that's the plan for the next few months. Yeah, thank you for listening, and I hope I didn't. There's still a little bit of time for questions. Was it there indeed is. Yes. Yep. Um, <laughs> now, well. More like eight, but we're good to go. Uh, we now have time for, okay. for some QA, but we're still waiting for questions from IRC. All right. Maybe everything is clear. Uh, OK, Timur Christoph asks, to someone who doesn't follow KDE, what is the difference between KWIN and KWIN FT? Yeah, so um, Quinn FT is, uh, was forked from Quinn. Uh, last year, so um, and it has some um, the, the scope of what we want to do in QuinFT is a little bit bigger. So we want to split out some libraries and, uh, for example, also improve uh, collaboration with other projects like WL Roots now. So uh, that's a basic idea of it. If you are more interested in it, I uh, there was a talk yesterday I hold, uh, I gave about QuinFT, like what the goals are of it and um, the what we want to do next. So um, just check it out it's in the stream, right? You already published everything from yesterday. And one more from Timur. Also, is this going to be upstream to KDE itself, or is this a spin-off project? Although it was answered yesterday, I believe it's up to KDE devs at this point. Yeah. Um, my per So my strategy at the moment is to have this library split out of uh, Queen of T. And uh, from these libraries, when KDE uh, can pick, right, I would, of course, make uh, um, try to advertise this as well um, to the people who can who have some decision power in that regard, uh, that some of these parts, right, when they have come to a certain degree of usability and stability, that then uh, in the KDE default compositor, right, which uh, is uh, currently Quinn, that this uh, compositor then could make use of some of these uh, split out libraries. And that would, of course, also mean that uh, transitively, it would also make use of WL roots. One more question from Sebastian Krzyszkowiak. As far as I understand it, WL roots renderer ask, aims to support only the simplest use cases, recently even removed drawing with arbitrary transfer matrices, while KWIN has plenty of effects, plugins, wobbly windows, things like that. Is it going to match well? What was the last bit? I didn't get this. Is, it go, is the WL roots and KWIN approach going to match well with each other? Uh, that's a good question. I'm, I mean, I have to look into that now, right? So I could now say, yeah, for sure, for sure, and uh, blah, blah, blah. But in, in fact, I haven't looked into the WA roots renderer in detail yet. So that's something I, I just think the, the advantages are there if you can share the code. And uh, um, if it doesn't fit the use case very well, then we have to think about uh, extending maybe the renderer. Um, the good thing is we have a good co good connection to WL roots devs. So, and they are always open for, for um, yeah, for improving their, the WL roots code. So I think if there are certain things which are missing to make it work, then 
I would uh, talk to them and hope you find a solution. Another idea is uh, Wayfire is also uh, a WL roots renderer, which, uh, which is a floating window manager and has a lot of effects and plugins for that. So I want to also look into if there is uh, possibilities for collaboration with them, right? So if there could be, for example, a library which uh, sits uh, in between WL roots and uh, compositors like uh, QuinFT and Wayfire, uh, floating window managers uh, with a lot of effects, which we could share, then that would be also great, right? If the scope of WL root, if that's too much for the scope of WL roots, then we can find a, a level between. And yeah, that's something I want to start looking into as soon as after this XTC and the next release of, uh, of QuinFT now is polished enough right, to go out. So uh, probably this month already and at last uh, next month after the release of QuinFT, after the next release. Okay, looks like that's all the questions we have for today. Thank you very much for a terrific talk and have a great day. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you too.